And now to our interview with the guest of the day. I am joined by the National Chairman of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, ABGA, Victor Ike Oye, for discussion on the performance and future of ABGA after the 2023 elections. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, sir. Thank you very much. Now let's start uh, with the just concluded 2023 elections. How will you describe the performance of your party in the polls? Yeah, the election, our party performed uh, very well. We won uh, seats, you know, usual places. For instance, uh, we won uh, 17 seats in the House of Assembly in my member state. Won uh, one senatorial seat in Ivia State. Won uh, two House of Assembly seats in Bayelsa. One House of Assembly seat in Taraba State. So our party has been winning elections across the country. And we give God all the glory. Uh, the future is very bright for our party. Despite all the distractions, we have remained focused in taking the party to the real next level. And we're very confident that in 2027, the party will perform better than it had done this year. And uh, as the national chairman of the party, I'm running off my tenure. I've done seven years and 11 months. By next month, by the special grace of God Almighty, I'll be handing over to a new leadership of the party. Uh, during my tenure, seven years and 11 months, we've achieved uh, you know, landmarks in terms of uh, performance, we, we have a, a national secretariat in Abuja. Abuja is, the, Abuja is the first political party in Nigeria to own a complex of its own in a strategic location in Abuja. And uh, we are doing a five-story building in Anambra uh, State that will, in Oka, that will serve as the regional headquarters of the party. Whoever will take over from me can replicate it in the, in the remaining five geopolitical zones of the country. So we, we, are, we, we have vision, very well-defined, shared, well-articulated vision to take the party to the next level. And the last election has really shown that Abga is the party to beat in the future. And we are confident that by the special grace of God, and put it in place, the strategies we have mapped out. We are very confident that uh, the future is very bright for us. All right, so having said that, uh, many political analysts say Abga is fast losing ground to Labour Party in the Southeast. Uh, do you agree with this submission? Uh, you see, what I, I see politics as a context. And in politics, there is no permanent foe, no permanent friend. What is permanent in politics is interest. Labour Party is a political party that can context for political space in Nigeria's uh, nationhood. So there, there, are no fast and fast, there are no fast and hard rules about it. Labour Party has its own space. Africa has its own space. Each party, all the political parties cohabit. We are all the same thing. I'm not a promoter of politics of bitterness. I'm a promoter of politics of love, mutual coexistence, mutual respect, love, and fraternity. That's all about politics. I'm not in politics to fight any political party. I'm in politics to chart a sustainable future for my own political party. You know, politics is all about context. Labour Party has its own political space. It's just like a marketing. Every product has its own space, you know, in the market mix. So, Abga has its own characteristics. And let me make it very clear. Abga is the only political, political party in Nigeria with a clear-cut ideology. There is no question about it. So I'm not here to talk about Labour Party or APC. I'm here to talk about my political party, which is ABGA. And ABGA is the party to beat. Before now, ABGA had been the third largest political party in, in Nigeria. ABGA is a movement. ABGA is a spirit. And that is why all the buffeting, all the efforts to demarket the party and diminish the spread of the party, 
all the efforts have failed. So for me, Labour Party has its own political agenda. Afghan has its own political agenda. We all cohabit within, within the same political environment. And uh, all our politics, politics has to do with strategizing, it has to do with luck, it has to do with performance, it has to do with proficiency. For us in Afghan, I can tell you that with every sense of responsibility and without any equivocation, that Afghan is the party to beat any day. And that was what happened in Anambra State in the last uh, House of Assembly election. We won the majority vote in Anambra State because that is the party at the grassroots in Anambra State. And we are working very, very hard by 2027. We are going to you know, make more impressive outing. And I'm very confident about that. What I believe in party is, a political party is live and let live. I'm not in politics to destroy anybody. And uh, my own is to contest for what is due to my political party and set the party on a sustainable path of growth and development. All right, Chief. Uh, now, you say um, Abga has a clear cut ideology. For the sake of emphasis, I would like you to reiterate the ideology of your party. And also, you said there are some factors or individuals trying to demarket your party. And who are uh, these individuals? Uh, you see, you are not a you are not a stranger to Nigeria's political system. We are all uh, witnesses to what has what has happened in Nigeria in the past uh, three four months. And uh, I am not here to name names because uh, those people know themselves. What I've come here to do is to you know talk about my party. As I said, APGA is the only political party in Nigeria with a clear-cut ideology. While well, other political parties are in crisis, APGA is not in crisis. Whatever you see happening in APGA is... Uh, the ideology of our party is welfareist ideology, people-oriented ideology, people-based. Everything we do in APGA is about the people. Move on. The uh, remains the focus. Please go ahead. Yes, the focus of our party is to build a society that is secure, a society that is uh, liberal, a society in which people will people live without fear of molestation. That is what we do. Go, for instance, go to Anambra State, where we have a governor. We have an international airport built by the past administration. We have an international conference center built by the same administration, an international stadium. And the current governor has done over 340 kilometers worth of roads across the state within one year in office. That is what we are talking about. Abga is people-based. And everything we do centers around the people. And that is why the party is loved by the people. Because what we do is to take governance to the grassroots, to have direct impact on the lives of our people. And that is why we have what we call shared vision. And our leaders are carefully selected in tune with Dalek's, uh, uh, Dalek's uh, uh, theory. You know, for you to be a good politician and a good leader, you must have five distinct qualities. The first one is vision. What vision do you have for your people? The second one is consensus building, which is team player. We work as a team. We band together to develop our society for the good of our people. Then the third one is charisma. Charisma is the ability to connect on a personal level. Abga is not a selfish party. And that is why when people with selfish egocentric agenda come, they fail. Because this party is people-rooted, people-oriented. Then the fourth one is credibility. Credibility is different from honesty. A credible leader is a leader with focus, with a, a leader that can manage the trust of the people. Most Nigerian leaders lack trust. They lack the people's confidence. For us in Abga, we cannot give you our ticket if you, are, you don't have a people-based ideology, shared ideology. Then the fifth one is pragmatism. 
Pragmatism is a combination of idealism and realism. Most Nigerian politicians are idealistic. They are not realistic. For us in Africa, we are realistic. We make promises that we can fulfill, promises that are sustainable, promises that can outlive our party and the leadership of the party. That's what we do in Africa. And that is why I said that the party is people-based. Anything you do in any political system without deference to the people, then you are not getting it right. For us in Abuga, the people remain, remain our strength. The people remain our focus. The people remain our main agenda. All right. Um, Chief Oye, I know you would agree with me, or rather you have said that you're here to talk about Abga and only Abga. But I'm sure you would agree with me that in talking about Abga, it's also very important to talk about uh, the lessons your party must have taken away from the 2023 um, election. And also in that respect might also uh, make us talk about other party also. All right. So, you know, Labour Party won uh, two Senate and six House of Representatives uh, seats in Anambra State. I would like to know how disappointed uh, you were that uh, Labour Party, like some persons have said, that Labour Party is gradually taking the position of APGA uh, in terms of grassroots following, especially in Anambra State. Uh, I beg to disagree with you. You know, as I said earlier, uh, all about political party politics is to win elections. Uh, I can never be disappointed. Uh, because in Anambra State, as you said, uh, Abga won uh, five House of, uh, House of Rep seats out of 11, and uh, won uh, 17 out of uh, 20, out of 30 House of Assembly seats. How could I have been disappointed when, in some states, <laughs> for instance, let me give you, for instance, in Enugu State, uh, the Labour Party won seven out of eight House of Rep seats. Uh, and in Abia State, uh, APC won uh, uh, one House of Assembly seat, YPP one House of Assembly seat, Labour Party 10, APC, I mean, uh, PDP 11. But in Anambra State, we have majority in the House of Assembly, comfortable majority in the House of Assembly. And that tells you a story. For instance, let me now take you to what happened last Saturday in the rerun election. That's what I mean, rerun election, supplementary election, in the, in the House of Reps in the Obaru federal constituency. Before the supplementary election, APP, a Labour Party was, candidate was leading by 1,500 votes. After that the supplementary election, his lead was cut down to 300. It tells you a story, okay? And um, what people have refuse to understand is that uh, Labour Party is one of the 18 political, registered political parties in Nigeria. So it, it has the capacity to win elections if it campaigns very, very vigorously. For us in Abga, Abga we are focused, okay? We, we, we don't run people down. We do issue-based campaigns. We don't engage in, in, in entities. We engage in constructive campaign and that's why our party has continued to win could you have could you have believed that Abga was going to win two house of assembly seats in Bayelsa state as far back of Bayelsa state as far back as so that tells you a story that Abga is the party of the future Abga is not a party that is a ethnocentric is not a party that in, is in, engages in clannishness. Our party is a party that engages in constructive campaign to win votes. And that is why all our campaigns have been peaceful and security in Anambra State has been growing from day to day. And that is as a result of the performance of the government we have in place. Uh, the Anambra chapter of ABGA has inaugurated a disciplinary committee to review the party's performance in the elections. How much of anti-party activities led to the poor performance of your party? Uh, I beg to disagree. Our party didn't perform abysmally. I said that the party performed very, very well. Let me tell you, election, winning elections in Nigeria 
is not an easy task. I can bet you that in 1979, President, the then President Shehu um, Shagare won elections by 37 votes, 39 votes, the same votes cast. And in the present uh, election, Tinubu won by uh, about 30% or 31% vote cast. In Anambra State, we won the House of Assembly seat in the state by over 51%. That's not a bad performance. The setting up of the disciplinary committee is just to ensure party discipline, enforcement of party rules, party guidelines, party constitution. That's they say it's not set up, it was not set up to hit with hunt anybody, with hunt anybody. No, it is in, it, it, it was set up to ensure party discipline that the party remains focused and members work in accordance with the constitution of the party. Because the party's constitution is the ground norm. And we are focused on ensuring that whatever we do is in accordance with the constitution of the party. So the, the disciplinary committee was set up by the state working committee to ensure that the party grows, not to, not to, not to you know, harangue anybody, rather to take a constructive stock of the last election and chat the way forward. All right, so there was no uh, anti-party activities within the state chapter of ABGA in Anambra State. Uh, I wouldn't say that. And there is no party that is free from anti-party activities. That's what I'm telling you, that the committee, disciplinary committee, is a routine thing in every political party. It was set up to review the past election and look into the activities of members of the party. And that committee is even yet to submit its report. When it submits its report, then we'll look at the, the content of the report, and then we can give you firm answers to your question. All right. So let's talk about another issue which you are uh, a party to. Your party has been embroiled in a protracted leadership crisis, spearheaded by yourself and um, Edozen Joko, whom the Supreme Court has reaffirmed as the national chairman. Do you see this as responsible for, you know, the performance of the party in the election? And I would like you to react to that. Uh, but I want to make you, I want you to correct uh, an impression, uh, and it have to withdraw that. Uh, it, it's wrong, wrong to say that the Supreme Court reaffirmed it. What do you mean by reaffirmation? Reaffirmation means that you had been chairman, and it was removed and reaffirmed. So it's wrong, wrong use of grammar. Edozi Njoku had never been chairman of Abga. He had never been chairman. The man you are talking about does not exist. If you watched since I started the program, I didn't want to refer to him. Because according to Justice uh, Kola Welo Motosho, in his judgment on the 27th of uh, April, he described, uh, Mark, sorry, it, this year, he described Edozi Njoku and all the people around him as unknown entities. That's a judicial pronouncement, unknown entities. And for information, the Supreme Court did not affirm anything. Are you getting me? A dozen joke was not a party to the suit at the Supreme Court. It was not a party to the suit at the Supreme Court. It has been decided you are just going back to old wounds. And there is no, there is no crisis in the party. What the Supreme Court did was to correct a what clerical sleep on page 13 of its judgment and the court said affirmatively firmly that that correction does not affect the substance of the judgment given on october 14 2021 and the the court also affirmed the judgment of the court of appeal candle and that judgment of the court of appeal candle affirm me as a national chairman of the party. Let me make it clear to you. A dozen joke does not exist because he did not conduct any convention. There was only one convention monitored by INEC on the 31st of May, 2019. Ask that man you are talking about. Where is investigative journalism? Ask that man called a dozen joke to produce an ex report of his so-called national convention. He doesn't have it. And I want to make it clear to listeners and viewers
that our party is not in any crisis at all. All the things we have been reading about uh, make beliefs, you know, designed to disorient the party. But we are focused, we are not moved, because we know that all the judgments given so far, since 2019 to date, all of them have affirmed me as the national chairman of the party. A dozen joke we are talking about has never won a single suit against Apuga. Not one single suit. So what are we talking about here? If Nigeria were a nation of laws, that man you are talking about should be in prison by now. Because he went to the Supreme Court, bribed, bribed the staff of the Supreme Court, and forged the judgments of the Supreme Court. And started parading these judgments, taking them to INEC, to serve INEC, to confuse INEC. This man must should go to jail. I've been making this call. Nobody listens to me. There is no way Nigeria should tolerate this kind of imp impunity. That somebody who never existed is laying claim to something that he never knew anything about. The man you are talking about does not exist. And I'll be very frank with you. I was produced by a veritable, viable national convention of 31st of May 2019 in Orca. And the team that came from INEC was led by Professor Sibine, Antonia Sibine, in a, alongside four other deputy directors from INEC. And they came and monitored the primary, I mean the convention, attended by 7,764 delegates. Who, which delegates attended the, the so-called convention in Owere? And could INEC have monitored a, two conventions from the same political party the same day? It's an impossibility. Let that man invite him to this program. Let him come with his INEC monitor, INEC monitor's report. And he should also produce the one day's notice he gave to INEC for the so-called convention. The man does not exist. And I want to tell the media in Nigeria to stop giving this man undue publicity. It does not exist. And I want to use this opportunity to call Mr. President. No, allow me to make this statement. I want to call on President Muhammad Buhari to make it a personal, take it as a res personal responsibility to order for the arrest of this Edozi Njoku. You know, he's standing trial at Buhari uh, uh, Court, uh, FCT Court, Court 40. He's standing trial for forgery and impersonation. So don't, be, don't say reaffirmation. The Supreme Court did not reaffirm anything. If the Supreme Court reaffirmed it, what am I doing here then? So you, you, the media, I'm a journalist by profession. I get disappointed when the media begin to make right, Chief, unnecessary views uh, about Chief this matter. Boye, Chief Victor, this man I'm does sure Edison Joku will have his own side of the story, which we will definitely get.